So I'm going to hopefully share a word of encouragement with you guys. Um, I'm going to share a little bit of my story. Um, so buckle up, it's going to be a bumpy ride. <laughs> um, whew. Uh, Lord, please anoint my mouth and let me um, share my story in a way that glorifies you, God. Um, I pray that you would get the glory um, to share my testimony with someone who may be hurting and it resonates with them, Lord. Um, I thank you that you, you are a shield of protection for us and I just pray that this word would um, minister to people's hearts today, Lord, and I pray that people would come and they would thirst for you, God. I pray that you would meet people where they are today, in their hurt, in their brokenness, in their shame, um, and I pray that you would give them joy. I pray that your word, um, the fruits of the Spirit would spring up in their life, God, um, and that we would be like a well-watered garden, God. Um, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so when I, um, who am I kidding? I am a subtle control freak. I was gonna say when I was a little girl, I was a control freak, um, but I'm, I still got a little, a little bit of subtle control in me. Um, and I think most people know, um, that I lost my mom of breast cancer when I was 19. My sister was 10. So, um, you know, it's, it's hard. I mean, I'm not gonna sugarcoat and be like, well, you know, it was awesome. It was like rainbows and butterflies. Um, it, it was a struggle. And I remember uh, after she died, I, not only was I dealing with this loss and I was mourning, um, well, that's not true. I was shoving it deep down, but, um, I was dealing with loss. I was trying to be, um, a caretaker to everyone. I was trying to please everyone. I felt like I had to be strong for my dad and for my sister. And In the midst of the sorrow, I realized that I'm not in control. I never have been. Um, I never will. And, you know, the Lord is the potter and I'm the clay. And my life has never been pretty. It has never been good when I try to be the potter. Um, so I hope to encourage you to let you know that he is your comfort. Um, I want to read to you from the book of John, and this is a story that has been preached numerous times. You've probably heard it, and I hope and pray that I can do it justice. Um, it's the word that's on my heart, and so um, I hope it speaks to you today. So um, in John chapter 11, um, the um, there is a a death of a man named Lazarus who um, who was a friend of Jesus and um, in John 11 chapter 8 it said it says Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus so when he heard that Lazarus was ill he stayed two days longer in that place where he was um, we jump to John 11, verse 14, and Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus has died, and for your sake I am glad that I was not there, so that you may believe, but let us go to him. So initially, if I if I read that, I'm like, oh my gosh, God, like you're glad that he died? This, sounds, this is like, this is horrible. Um, but then we get to really see the heart of God. We get to really see the heart of Jesus. Um, so it's, it's really amazing. Um, and I love, I love Martha because she just, whew, she is just a straight shooter, man. She calls it like it is. And, um, 
When Jesus came, he found that Lazarus had already been in the tomb four days. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went and met him. But Mary remained seated in the house. Martha said to Jesus, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would have not died. But even now I know that whatever you ask from God, God will give you. And Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And, you know, Martha says, I know he will rise again. You know, um, we're all going to rise again on, on the resurrection on the last day. And Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Whoever believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And everyone who lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? She said, yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Christ, the Son of God, who is coming into the world. Now, so um, there have been times in my life where I have been like Martha and I have said to God, like, you know, you could do this. Like, you could you could have been here and I would have really appreciated it. Um, and then, you know, your heart softens and, and you, you say, like, okay, like, I know it, it's going to be okay. But... Um, what I think is so interesting is there's these two sisters, Mary and Martha, and um, Martha goes and she meets Jesus, and Mary stays back. And I don't know about you, but um, I resonate more with Mary because a lot of times in the hurting, I kind of just want to not confront it and I want to cry out to the Lord and um, maybe that's that's you today maybe um, you're finding comfort in other things you're finding comfort in Netflix you're finding comfort in scrolling right and um, maybe you're finding comfort in a drink and sometimes I don't want to go out and I don't want to face it and um, my brokenness can sometimes keep me from, from him. My shame can keep me, and my shame can sometimes allow me to hide from my father. But the good news is, is that he always comes. He always comes in the midst of our shame, in the midst of our brokenness. And um, Mary goes to her sister, or I'm sorry, Martha goes to her sister Mary and she says, the teacher is here and is calling for you. And when Mary heard it, she rose quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet come into the village, but was still in the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews who were with her in the house, consoling her, saw Mary rise quickly and go out, they followed her. Supposing that she was going to the tomb to weep there. Now when Mary came to where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet. Saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who had come with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in his spirit and greatly troubled and he said where have you laid him lord come and see they said and jesus wept and um so ultimately jesus was able to raise Lazarus from the dead and um but I think honestly it's not for me it's not even the miracle of of what he did right um and I'm sure Mary and Martha they both wanted a miracle but I think even more than that um I think that they got to see 
the heart of Jesus. They got to see that um, he is tender towards us. The Father is a tender God, and um, he doesn't he doesn't say to us in her in our suffering, you know, okay, well, you know, just figure it out, and it is what it is, and I'm sorry to hear about it, you know. I know the corona is going on right now, but um, sorry. Uh, But Jesus, um, he weeps with us. He is deeply moved with compassion. And um, sometimes in your hurting, you don't always want to hear, you know, blessed are those who mourn for they shall be comforted. Um, sometimes you just want to sit um, with the feelings or maybe you want to avoid the feelings. And um, maybe you want to hide from your father. Maybe you want to hide from the brokenness. Maybe you want to mask it and pretend like it doesn't hurt. Um, but I believe that when um, we let Jesus minister to the broken, broken places in our hearts, the, um, the deepest, darkest things that we may be carrying, that we may be walking through um not always does he you know come through in the way that that we want or the way that we expect but um he always meets us in the hurt in the brokenness in the shame um and you see that in uh the garden when adam and eve they were hiding from him he came to them he came to them even in the midst of their shame and their nakedness and um you can take that spiritually or you can take that literally. Um, but God's not ashamed of your brokenness. He's unashamed of your um, nakedness. And he wants you to come to him. And I want to um, share with you Psalm 18. Um, and I hope that this is comfort to your heart and to your soul. I love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. I call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised and I am saved from my enemies. And um, in uh, Psalm 18, verse 28, it says, for it is you who light my lamp. The Lord my God lightens my darkness. And I don't know um, what Mother's Day is like for you. I don't know what you may be walking in. I don't know what, um, what you may be experiencing during the season. But um, I just want to pray for all of the moms out there. Uh, I pray for, for patience with mothers, Lord. I pray that um, that your Holy Spirit would dwell within them, that you would give them the patience to minister to their children, to raise up godly men and godly women, and that you would um, draw that you would draw us near to you, God, that you would meet us um, in our hurt, that you would meet us in the midst of our anxiety, and that I I pray that your presence would wash over your people, over all the mothers who may be frustrated, Lord, with their children. I pray that they would turn to you, Jesus. I pray that they would turn to you, God, to know how to raise their children. I pray that you would comfort them, Lord. I pray for women who have lost their children. God, I pray that, uh, that you would comfort them. I pray for moms who are going through postpartum depression. I pray that you would give them freedom, Lord, that you would um, allow them to have community, that they wouldn't hide from their brokenness, Lord, that they, would, that they would get the healing that they need, that they would know that their identity is in you, God, that, um, that you tell them who they are and I pray that they would believe the truth that you are who you say you are and so that they can they can trust you 
they can trust that they are who you say they are. And I pray that they would look to you for their identity. I pray for children who are without their mothers, God. Um, I pray that you I pray that you would hide them in the shelter of your wings. You would comfort them, God. I pray that you would comfort those who are mourning right now. Um, I pray for the dads who have to step up and, and be moms who they didn't, they didn't ever expect for that to happen, Lord. And I pray that you would give them grace, God. That you would give them grace in this season. Um, I pray that as we are going about our days that we look to you as our model, Jesus. I pray that you would minister to our hearts. I pray that we would be known by you and that we would be overcome with love for you, God. I pray that your compassion would compel us. Your compassion for us would compel us to have compassion over others, Lord. I pray that we would weep together, that we would experience joy together. And, um, I pray for your children to know you, God. I pray for them to experience you in a fresh way today, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. So um, I hope that this is comforting to you. I hope that this um, encourages you. And I just want to let you know that if, even if you don't ask, I am praying for you. So I love you. And until next time, I'll see you next time.